Hey guys, I'm back with part two of the Brutes tutorial. This is the painting side of things, and I'm going to be demonstrating a very quick and easy, dirty, grim dark look, um, which you can copy out on any army that you just want to knock out and have it, got a, well, give it the grim dark vibe, really. I'm using oils, I'm keeping things simple, so check it out. There's also some freehand as well if you want to have a little look at how I do the freehand on the turnip miniatures and how I approach it. Um, we'll be having a little chat about that in the video, so see you soon. So with a quick bit of basing, I mixed in some African Shadow from Scale 75 with Ranox Hide and uh, just slapped on a big brown, like dark brown with a little bit of purple. The African Shadow's got a little bit of purple in it, so it gives it a nice, slightly interesting tone. Um, then just dry brushed with uh, adding a little bit of white sands into the mix. So the Scale 75, so that's Mojave White. There we go, where's white sands? mixing a little bit of this in for the highlight so um, everything's going to get hit with an oil wash so that will just about come through i didn't want it to be like a normal poppy dry brush base it just needs to look a little bit um brighter on some of the raised areas so i forgot i primed everything in gray so i just got the airbrush and sprayed some polyurethane gray primer through it um just at this sort of side angle so I didn't catch any of the base. I mean, it might have clipped a little bit of the base, but it's not the end of the world. Um, and we needed this just because with the brighter colour, it means that we don't have to do as many layers when we're putting the reds and the metallics down. It just speeds everything up. Um, having a little bit of black in the darker recesses is also fine, um, as it adds a bit of a pre-shade. Um, so yeah, we're just going to get going and apply all the red base coats. And here we go. For this video, you know, it's going to be best for you to just grab a cup of tea or stick this on while you're painting. I'm just going to be talking over the footage of recorded it and then done it in times two. Um, unfortunately, the original volume had to be gotten rid of due to um, my wife shouting in the background and cats and things, <laughs> various different noises. So I, I wanted to do a quick voiceover at the top. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Um, I'm the reds I'm using here is Gory Red from Game Color. Um, it's basically corn red, and I kind of use both of these colors interchangeably. Um, I have a lot of Citadel Air paints in my collection, which were just given to me by my local store. Um, I think they had to go through a purge of some of the air paint uh, pot sizes. They upgraded them to the 48 mil pots and then just got had to get rid of all of the smaller pot sizes so yeah i was the, the willing donor for one of those pots um, which was very helpful but yeah for coverage i wouldn't use the air paint so this is gory red from game color absolutely love game color paints excellent coverage coverage really good pigmentation the new i haven't got any of the new game color brand but i've heard good things about them these ones here are the old and original game color paints um, I'm sure the new ones are as good, if not better. Um, but yeah, for this miniature, we're literally, throughout all of them, we're doing different patterns. Um, I've done stripes, I've done checkers, I've done squares, stuff like this. I wanted each model to have its own little individual filigree. We're doing very simple red and black. Um, we're not highlighting, we're literally going over with a fairly consistent coat. Doesn't matter if some of the base um, colors come through and that's the advantage of having a pre-shade right we've got the gray primer over that black giving us a little bit of a pre-shade so it's darker in some of the recesses um, and that's going to reflect coming through with a nice even thin-ish coat um, for coverage always pull the brush towards you when you're doing freehand when you're doing shaping if you want to get a straight line um, pull it in so that you're eliminating as many angles as possible um i like to pull towards me or flick the brush towards my hand just pulling backwards um so like for example when we do the shields um it just helps you get a straight line when you come in with your secondary color you can help tidy up that line uh, which is what i do when doing the black a bit later on in the video but yeah just chill out we're just going to enjoy and um crack on with some painting. Thank you. 
in with the black tones now on the model um apologies if things go out of focus i didn't put it on autofocus sorry it is on auto focus i didn't put it on manual unfortunately when recording this um which i have learned since that i need to do <laughs> picked up a few techniques since starting to make these sorts of youtube videos and your feedback and support has been incredibly useful um so basically i'm using a mixture here on the black so i'm quite fond of the vallejo um mecha color um and i bought the black for that because it's a really really good coverage on it it's a very smooth paint um i think it's devised for like gunpla style stuff so it dries quite satin however i mixed in some of the abaddon black or abaddon black whoever you want to pronounce it um, from games workshop and again i had the air paint so i needed to use something else to sort of bulk it out but adding the abaddon black just added a little bit more matte finish to it um and just got the the tone that i wanted to go for i do highlight the black a little bit later i don't think i've taken any footage of that but i highlighted it a little tiny bit with some german camo gray which is again a paint that i absolutely adore from vallejo um i use it a lot for non-metallic metals um i use it to highlight a lot of black um just really really good paint it's an off black so it's slightly brighter slightly warmer um yes great little paint um but because we're using oil washes again we haven't really done any highlighting i wanted to have uh, i wanted the oils to, to sort of tell the tale and do the job for us um and then i do a tiny bit of highlighting on some of the metallics later on with some weathering pencils um which i'll go into a bit later but for the black we're just going around we're hitting some of these straps um we're trying not to hit any of the red and i feel like i did quite a quick job like i said this is for army painting this video so it's more devised at being quick and um, being as careful as you can when you're trying to speed paint um so yeah you want a paint with good coverage you know if you need to thin down your paint just a touch you know just a little bit of water can help but obviously i'm making an air paint with a with the mecha paint so the air paint being pre-thinned kind of did that job for me and just really had a nice bit of um fluidity to it on the brush and um, so it really helped with this sort of style of painting especially when you're going to do something like freehand and you don't want to try and you want to load the brush so you don't have to keep coming back in two there you go we're tidying up some of the lines as well um, which we'll be doing with the black we may come back in with the red but i think the majority of the tidying up can be done with the black here when making stripes because you can, you know, be as specific as you want to be uh, with those lines. There you go, tidying up with the red a little bit in a few places. It's better to do that now than um, to forget. And then, because like once you've done the oil wash, you can't really come back from that.
Next up, we've got metallics on the table. I am using the scale color uh, metallic or metal alchemy set. Um, I picked this one up for Christmas in 2023, and it's been amazing, honestly. Um, this is a mix of thrash metal with a little dot of dark metal. Again, if you're going to be doing a TMM or true metallic metal, you can really go like super dark with the dark metal. Start mixing in the thrash metal if you would want a little bit more oily, um, a browner sort of metallic. Uh, again, apologies for the focus going out. But I'm trying to do what I can. There you go, focus is back. Um, basically, just going around, getting all the details, getting all the plate mail. I want a nice, even coat. Again, those metal alchemy paints are excellent because the coverage, it's a very smooth paint. Um, they just go on really, really nicely. Um, you know, if if you wanted to mix a brighter tone in, it's got um, a couple of different ones in that set, which goes up to like basically a pure white metal pigment. So if you really want to pop out your edges, you can come in with that as well. And they all mix in really nicely and you're not losing any of that metallic sheen. Like if you do, if you were to mix in a white or a gray, um with your metallic paint so there you go i basically just do that over every single metallic surface um and then we hit it with a weathering um material or effect paint We're using the Army Painter Effect Paint Dry Rust here and you want to be adding this really thick to the models because as it dries it loses quite a lot of the vibrancy that you want. Um, you know, go. You can layer this up as well so if you want it to be a thicker rust effect with that orange, you know, let it dry, come in with another bit and just continue to rust things up. I wanted it to be a nice tone of across all of the metal pieces on on these miniatures so everything's got a layer of rust to it because i'm going to then crisp up some of those lines and highlights later with those weathering pencils um i was considering using a special um rust effect which i'm going to do in another later down the line but that activates with water and the army painter dry rust doesn't once it's down and it's dry it doesn't reactivate Next up, I just wanted to add some of the details um, to the model. So I've, as you can see, the bases, I've added some purples to the mushrooms. I've added some greens to some of the little swamp tufts. Again, trying to keep everything really simple because the oil wash is really going to do the business and shade everything down. And then as you remove that oil, obviously it looks more like a highlight. Um, so with the turnipy stuff, I sort of had the idea of doing like a very pale purple. So I mixed the, I think it was hexed lichen from Game Color with either Pale Sands or Mojave, um, but more of a pale color and just highlighted it up a little bit so it looked very bright um, for the turnipy stuff. Um, so we do that on pretty much each of these miniatures. They've all got something going on. Um, the horns on the brute, like that I was going to do is kind of the leader the frogmouth set one of them comes with like a set of horns or they could be turnips who knows i was painting them as horns and i just did those in a bone color more gassed bone from games workshop citadel range um i really like that as a bone color it's a dark bone color and i just mixed in again some mojave white um and some pale sands just to sort of brighten up a bit because you know, lo and behold we're going to be using oils So 
So we're going to start off with the free hands, and I'm using White Sands and Mojave uh, White for this. So I wanted like a nice pale, um, creamy tone to do because obviously once the oil goes over it, it's going to like really take out some of that color and turn everything quite dark brown. So if I went with a nice pale tone over the top, it's got a decent coverage. It was like what you can find with a lot of some of these tones um, that they don't have the best coverage. So I had the image in mind. I picked up and with freehand, I like to have a reference picture with you. So I had up on the monitor, had some of Max's artwork um, of the Feast of the Charybdis for the crab. Um, I had painted the crab before, so I also got my other crab miniature out, which I'd done some freehand on earlier and took inspiration from that. So basically just drawing out the shapes initially um, and then you start coloring everything in. I'm not going to give you a full commentary over everything here. Do I sit and enjoy? But well, I will give you some suggestions as we go. Um, I'm using a number two. Um, this is a Rosemary & Co. Series 33 brush. Um, it's a fantastic, fantastic brush. I've used it for months. I've only now just sort of stopped using it because I got some Artis Opus ones for my birthday. Um, but the Series 33 is fantastic for stuff like this. It holds a really neat tip. It has a good body to the brush, which allows you to hold a decent amount of paint. This is ideal for freehand, right? You want something that can hold a decent amount of paint so that you don't have to keep coming back to your palette to pick out more. Once you're in a flow with a freehand, you want to keep that flow rocking, right? You want to have a nice sharp tip so you can get those details. Um, if you really want to go for a really small brush, you can do, you know? Um, I don't know if I did that on these, but I have done in the past. I've dropped down to a much smaller brush to catch more details. Um, but considering the tip that the Series 33 can hold and stuff like the Artis Opus brushes, you don't really need to. Just make sure that you're not pressing very hard on the brush. You control the amount of pressure that you're placing. And that's really important for helping you draw out the shape that you want. Um, and don't forget that you can go back in two. A lot of people with freehand don't realize they're going back in two. It, you know, it's not a one and done situation. Um, in some cases, when you've done a lot of work on the background that you're trying to do the freehand over the top, it can be quite difficult to come back in and color match. Let's say you've airbrushed on a tank and then you want to do a bit of freehand. That might be quite difficult to color match like a fade that you've put in from an airbrush. So just be very careful. Um, but you know most of the time you can come and correct if need be um, or just for example like on this crab if I made a mistake that wasn't too happy with uh, like on the length of the claw or some of the angles you could add spikes you could add little bits of tendrils um, little bits like that like this crab claw here you know I turned some of the mistakes in the rounding of the crab claw into sort of jagged spikes coming on the inside and the outside um, which is helping me disguise by haste um, there you go I've dropped down to a smaller brush there that was just to get like a smaller spike formed um, and then for some of the other ones I wanted to have some just general turnipy vibes um, so just quickly drawing in a circle filling the circle in then giving it the nice little roots that you need that are super super necessary for turnip 28 stuff and are really fun to paint as well just drag the brush down don't press very hard um, and you know having a little bit less paint when doing the roots is quite helpful because then the line sort of thins out towards the end of your brush stroke um, which is quite helpful sometimes you need a couple of coats here on these turnips i came in with a little bit of that tone that we used before on the turnips themselves that purple mixed in with those pale whites so I've come back in here and just sort of added it in to bring that turnip shape and colour into life. I then took the greens that we'd used earlier, again mixed them in with a little bit of um, a pale tone just to make them stand out a little bit more across that black and red. And you've got to remember that oils are going to go over the top of this as well. So we can have like a nice fade effect put in from those oils. So having a nice little thin brush with a good tip. Is...
and here we go after a coat of the oils so it's all still very wet and literally just slapped it on as you can see here i've got a nice little mix that i pre-made using two different ones we've got burnt umber from windsor and newton and we've got the abtai lungs uh, starship filth both that i really like to use when doing oils they mix well gives you like a really dark brown um and as you can see it's just added all that grime where we need it once that is dry you then start removing with the winter newton spirits next and once the oils are dried after probably about 18 hours roughly um i used my ak interactive weathering pencils these were you know i didn't need to use these but i just wanted to use them because they're quite fun um this one is actually like a shining sort of silver steel tone um and over the oil it stuck really nicely i was able to catch all of the edges that i wanted to catch um which you know can be a little bit more difficult sometimes with edge highlighting this was excellent for speed highlighting i had watched the ninjon video on using them for edge highlighting i understand where he's coming from like it can go a bit wrong but for this kind of model with quite profound edges over an oil it worked really really well um, i then sealed it with a matte varnish um, i then tried to use a couple of browns and burnt umbers but other than that it's golden and here you go guys the oils have dried i've done a gloss varnish over the top of everything because i wanted to have a shiny wet look to the miniatures because that's turn it 28 everything's muddy everything's dank and disgusting and this really grim dark vibe all came together thanks to those oils making it a really fast and quick way of painting you know if you really want to knock out a big unit of men and you just want to paint base coats a couple of different bits get your oil on remove it with those q-tips with your 100 newton emulsion or whatever you want to use to remove it um you know add in a couple of little flavored highlights and you're golden i absolutely love painting these miniatures had such a great time and i'm probably going to be doing a second cult as well so stay tuned enjoy the rest of this and i'll catch you on the next one i also stream every wednesdays on twitch i have got much better on my stream schedule lately but i've cut it right down to one day a week right this minute just so i can have more time to try and edit and make videos for youtube but wednesdays and stream days usually between 12 and 5 p.m i usually start in that region uh, latest at two but yeah join us for that for commission painting for tunes for chats and uh, come and share your wits with us on the discord so yeah don't forget to subscribe there and drop us a follow on twitch if you like as well